So this is uh, Better Places uh, charging stations that they just put up here at, right next to the Danish uh, Times Square or Copenhagen Times Square. First of all, you park for free in the center of the city. Second of all, you get free energy uh, for your car. So it's a very strong incentive for people to say, you know, I need to get an electric car because not only can I park in the center of the city, I can get free energy. And, and also in Denmark right now, the, the tax incentives are very strong. You don't have to pay tax, which is the main problem of buying cars in Denmark is that they put 50% tax on top of it. So it's cars here are really expensive, gas is really expensive. So, you know, it's, it's, a pushing, it's pushing people to really think about this with the whole idea with electric cars. So the government is, is really behind this then in terms of getting it out there and, and, yeah, and, and making yeah. people sort of think twice about... Uh, it's also a way of branding the country, you know, branding the country being renewable and, and thinking, thinking about the future and thinking about the environment. And after the COP15, the climate summit was here, you know, they really, it's important to follow up on that and the message needs to be really strong. And, you know, that's why Better Place has chosen Denmark also to be the, the city or the country where, where they want to really make a fast move. Also, the country is very small and the infrastructure is very, very, very tight. So it's not, it's not hard to do it in this little country. Um, no, the country also is a big uh, uh, windmill uh, provider. Is, yes. Is that, yes. uh, that going to have anything to do with uh, getting electricity maybe and out? Absolutely, because that's essentially the m most beautiful thing with electricity for cars is that if it all comes from windmills, then it's completely clean. The only problem right now is that the electricity still comes from, from coal. A lot of it comes from coal. Uh, so it's still not 100% clean, but that's the, that's the whole point is that if it comes directly from, from, from wind, wind energy, then you basically drive a completely clean uh, car. And the other thing is that the idea is also to then connect the car's batteries into the grid of the country. Which means that if you park your car at home, you connect your, your, your battery to the energy grid of the city or the, where the area where you live. Which means that once it's loaded up, it also keeps a steady balance in the energy grid. So all the, ca all the cars standing around in the suburbs, they become part of the energy grid. So they reserve and preserve the energy. So, it's, so you can keep it very straight instead of, you know, at seven o'clock in the morning when everybody goes up, all of a sudden goes up like this in the energy. But here, by, by keeping it all like that, it, it, it doesn't have that peak. It's, it keeps it at a, at a several, several kind of a evil level. So, so then you don't have to, uh, it's not as expensive as well. What is it about the Danish psyche that encourages the use of green, uh, green sources of energy? It's, I mean, in Denmark, people have been very aware of the climate for a very long time, and they have been very kind of front runners when it comes to uh, ecological living in many ways. And, uh, you know, bicycles, you know, they're very big on bicycles. And, uh, you know, public transportation there is really big. And now with, with electric cars is that because cars are so expensive here, if they can see that it makes so much sense also economically to buy an electric car and that the government is behind it, it's, you know, it's, it just makes a lot of sense. I guess it's a win-win, eh? It is win-win, uh, yeah. And, uh, and then with, with, uh, also with the wind, if you go back to the wind, is that uh, windmill energy cannot be preserved. You can't, you can't put it into a battery. It goes straight out. So that energy that goes straight out goes straight into the car batteries. So that's a way of, before you couldn't save wind energy, but all of a sudden 
you can save it by sticking it into the car battery. So I guess that there have been advances in, in batteries in order to, to uh, hold on to charge and have longer charges because I, I would think yeah. for I long... Mean, if you think about the, the cell phone, you know, how big the cell phones used to be because of the batteries, and then all of a sudden when you focused on making the cell phones smaller, they became super small, and then after they became small, they became big again because then they got full of technology. It's going to be the same thing with the cars. The only thing is that the manufacturers haven't focused on electricity, uh, on electric cars and on batteries, so they're very, very far behind. But once, you know, Obama is the one saying, you know, this is what's going to happen now, this is where we're going to focus. And once everybody sees that this is what's going to happen, it's not just a joke. Everybody is going to focus on this and, and the cars are going to be coming out soon. I mean, there's uh, Chevy is coming out with a Volt and Nissan is coming out with a Leaf. And we saw these, these cars at, in New York at the, the auto show, and they're amazing, they're beautiful, and they, you know, they can drive far, and they're smart, and they're, you know, I looked at people standing around when this lady was talking about it, they couldn't believe their own eyes, so years, because it's, it makes so much sense. Um, so, and then there's, of course, Tesla, which is, you know, our wonderful inventor from New York, uh, Nikolai Tesla, who lived at the New Yorker, who basically invented the electricity as we know it now. Uh, and that's, there's a car company, the guy that de developed or invented PayPal, started the car, called it Tesla, which is the most sexy and beautiful electric car right now. Uh, and, you know, once that is hitting the streets in New York and people are seeing it, it's also going to blow people's minds and say, you know, I want this too. And New York, of course, is... I mean, all the bicycle lanes and the parks and the green areas and, you know, Bloomberg saying, you know, all the cabs need to be hybrid by 2012 and, you know, there's a lot of things happening. Only thing right now with the cabs in New York is that the quality, that the quality of the cars are really very low quality. So the cab drivers are not very happy about it. But as soon as the cab drivers get some good quality cars and they see that they, they save 20, 30 bucks a day, it's going to make a big difference. 20, 30 bucks a day for a week for a cab driver, that's a lot of money. And that's that's another thing is that, uh, you know, once the cab drivers are seeing this, they will be more happy about it. But right now, the quality is, is really poor and there's no mechanics in New York that really know how to work in a battery or, or, you know, these hybrid cars. So... What, what do you think is going to take to change that? One thing is that the, the cab drivers can feel that they're making more money. Uh, and the cab drivers become the profits of this new way of thinking. You know, if the cab drivers will tell every single customer saying, I'm driving the best car I've ever driven and, it, and I make money from doing it, uh, it's really cool and it's silent and people in here, they love it when they drive in it. I make a difference because I don't do any noise pollution, I don't do any pollution in the city, and I, I'm actually an active part of making a difference. Then something can really happen. And we are talking about making a microfinancing project where the cab drivers of New York should take a small part of the extra money that they make, put it into a microfinancing fund, and send it back to their country, to you know Bangladesh or Africa or wherever, to have their cousins and brothers buy electric cars and by that you know be, be microfinancing investors and they have a whole different conversation with their with their the guy behind them instead of talking about so how's the Yankees or whatever they're talking about you know I'm actually a microfinancing investor this car that I'm driving I'm making money every day so I can pay for my my family at home driving an electric car and in you know in, in back home you know it's going to make a big, big difference in my family instead of just sending it through, uh, you know, these, these money laundering ser services. I'm actually making a difference with a, with a microfinancing concept that is, you know, Mohammed Yunus won the won the Nobel Prize for microfinancing. So it's there, and it's the future of, of economy. Right now, the economy is falling apart. Microfinancing is the future, and if if the cab drivers of New York can be the front runners in this by driving good cars and being prophets of, of the future and, and, and prophets of, of renewable energy and, and you know, the future car and all these kind of things and also being friends more friendly with their, with their 
uh, bicycle guys because right now they hate the bicycles, they kill them. And now they'll see, you know, we have something in common instead. So. Okay, one last question. You were taking the message on a global scale. How is the awareness factor? People get this awareness once, you, I mean, it's like with anything. Once you know the truth, and you keep not following the truth, then you're basically, that's the definition of sick, then you're crazy. So if you know what's the right thing to do, and you don't do the right thing, then you're an idiot. And if you can look at yourself saying, I'm, I know what's right, but I'm, I'll keep doing the wrong thing. I mean, at this point in time with the evolution of thought and mind, you know, we're not gonna keep doing the wrong thing. We're gonna keep doing the right thing.